Hey everyone! <laughs> hey everyone! Okay. All right. Some We're slight doing... technical difficulties today. Here, I'll, I can start with the, uh, the info. Okay, hi everyone! Uh, this is Holly coming at you live from Blue Planet. We had a few technical difficulties. So apologies for the delay in getting started, but welcome to another edition of our Friday Gear Deep Dive. Um, we started doing these Gear Deep Dives each week um, because there's tons of stuff in the shop that gets overlooked regularly, especially if people are just coming for a very specific um, pieces of gear um, or you're just casually shopping. And so this gives us a chance to talk about some of our favorite pieces. Um, tell you what we love about them, what sets them apart from the competition, how they can improve your bottom time and even maybe make you a better diver, I don't know. Um, and then we wanted to run these live, um, although it might be a little bit challenging today, um, because we wanted to sort of replicate what it might be like to have a conversation um, like we would live face-to-face -face in the shop. Um, so we can answer your questions right away. Um, and then, of course, if you're, for, for whatever reason, um, <laughs> watching um, not live, uh, if you watch it later, feel free to put questions in, uh, in the comment section and we'll, um, we're happy to answer them as we go. Um, so we're really glad you're here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and also, if you are here and you have this piece of gear that we're going to talk about today, um, feel free to chime in with your experience with it. Uh, we love to hear um, people's feedback because uh, it's stuff that maybe we haven't um, experienced yet when, uh, when we've been using it. So, um, Jonas is here and he is going to talk to us today about atomic aquatics regulators. All right? Hey everyone, uh, thank you Holly, thank you for joining us. Um, today I'm going to go ahead and talk about the, uh, the atomic regulators. Um, my personal favorite, um, I've been diving one uh, now for probably going on over 10 years, uh, the same one. Um, uh, but what I wanted to go ahead and just kind of introduce everybody to is the flagship line, which is the T-Series, uh, which was the initial design uh, from Dean and Doug, who started Atomic Aquatics uh, back in 1985. Uh, they had been working in the industry since the sort of mid to late 70s uh, as regulator uh, and uh, design technicians. Um, they decided to go ahead and start their own company because they wanted to produce basically what was, in their opinion, uh, you know, the finest breathing regulator on the market. Um, so they started Atomic Aquatics um, out there in California. Uh, they built their own facilities. They manufacture everything there. Uh, they test everything there. Um, uh, so they basically don't outsource anything. So this is 100% made in the USA regulator. Uh, their, their intent also was to create regulators that were um, basically just engineering marvels. Um, and I think they did a pretty darn good job uh, with, the, uh, with their uh, regulators. Like I said, there is a line of them, uh, but I'm gonna talk about the what is now up to the T3. Uh, started with the T, and then the T1, and then the T2, uh, and then now we are up to the T3. Um, what sets these apart from most regulators is just the, um, the fact that um, these things are designed for what they call natural breathing. Uh, what does natural breathing mean? It means that it is unencumbered breathing at any depth. Um, you'll see that this has a control knob on the side here, uh, like most high quality regulators. However, with, uh, with, uh, with Atomic here, this control knob, you should not have to touch at any point during the dive. Uh, the breathing resistance uh, to go ahead and, and account for higher pressures at depth, uh, with some regulators you need to open these up a little bit more to get that easier smooth breathing. What Atomic did was they created something and patented it called the AFC, which is the automatic flow control. Uh, it's on the side here. There's a small diaphragm in there that goes ahead and registers the depth. Uh, as it breathes, it moves a uh, basically a small piece of, of, uh, of uh, plastic uh, with a hole in it 
out, allowing more air in. So it controls the Venturi effect, in short. Um, in layman's terms, what it means is that this thing will breathe exactly the same as it does at 20 feet as it would at 130. Um, these things are assembled in a clean room, um, hand assembled. They are tested on machines to 165 feet. Uh, so essentially you're buying a used regulator. Um, but um, uh, they are actually designed for that same ease of breathing well beyond 300 feet. Um, and it's all done through that automatic flow control. The adjustment knob here on the side is just in case down the road, uh, if you're using it as an octo, um, or maybe it's time to go ahead and bring it in for servicing and you're hearing a, a small little hiss come out, you can turn that knob a little bit. But basically, during a dive, you don't need to touch this knob. It's all done for you through the automatic flow control. Uh, going up the regulator, what you will notice is this nice little swivel here. So this is the comfort swivel. Uh, Atomic added this to go ahead and take care of that jaw fatigue that a lot of us would feel holding that regulator in your mouth when you feel that hose just kind of always yanking out a little bit. Um, so by adding a comfort swivel in there, um, you find the position that uh, feels the best for you and uh, no more jaw fatigue, no more feeling like you really need to like clamp down on that regulator to keep it in your mouth. Um, one thing that I want to go ahead and back up really quickly on is that what makes the second stages uh, unique other than the automatic flow control, the comfort swivel, um, are a couple little things. Uh, one, the mouthpieces that come from Atomic. These are uh, dual durometer silicone. These are two different um, uh, hardnesses, if you will, of silicone. Nice and soft on the outside, and then the little bitey bits are a bit harder, so they stand up to us um, chomping away and chewing away on our regulators on our dives if we're prone to do that. I know Heather is. Uh, anyways, um, so the really wonderful mouthpiece, super nice and soft. Um, every single metal part in this second stage, from the swivel to the valve inside, the inlet tube, uh, the lever, if you've ever seen what the inside of a regulator looks like, Every single metal part in this second stage is made from titanium. Um, why use titanium? Well, this was their, their uh, initial thought, which was we want to create the ultimate regulator. What are we going to make it out of? We'll make it out of titanium. It's you know, virtually non-corrosive. Um, uh, there's some, some study that shows that you, know, you could go ahead and put this, the specific alloy that they're using in salt water uh, and it would take about 300 years before you saw any sign of corrosion. So what they've done in, cre in changing every single part in the second stage, which is unique to atomic, to, to titanium, is made it virtually non-corrosive. Um, so that's the second stage. We move on up to the first stage. Um, these are available in both yoke and din. Um, they come by default sealed. So that means that no environmental water is getting into this regulator, um, uh, thereby basically making it even, you know, preventing even more corrosion and also just uh, extending the life, uh, making this a excellent regulator to be used in not just silty environments, but also very cold water. Um, so sealed comes standard on the T3. Uh, you will also notice something else here. This here is called a rotating turret. That means that when you have the hoses coming off to the sides here, you decide where you want those hoses to go, as opposed to most regulators which have fixed ports, which is where if you don't like how that hose comes out, sorry, that's where it's, that's where it's gonna come from. Um, but with this rotating turret design, um, you can go ahead and control the positioning of those hoses. Uh, another really lovely feature on these regulators. Um, the first stage here also has a unique feature, which is another patented thing, which is basically um, 
uh, a jet seat. Uh, it is a piston. Uh, for you guys who are wondering, this is not a diaphragm-based first stage. This is a piston. The piston, uh, most pistons work by having a very sharp edge that connects uh, to usually a piece of Teflon. That's what seals it. Uh, Atomics is actually the way that they designed it. Um, it is actually smooth, which means that uh, these things will function longer than your typical regulator uh, before it's time to, to be serviced. Um, the Aqua, uh, excuse me, Atomic here um, basically says they have designed these regulators uh, to work for um, uh, 300 dives or two years, whichever comes first. So you do 300 dives on it, bring it in, we'll get it serviced for you. Um, if you aren't diving a lot, uh, bring it in every two years for that full servicing. Um, so this is the T3, as I mentioned. There is a line. Um, there is also the B2. Uh, and as its name implies, you have the T3, titanium. The B2 is basically a chrome-plated brass. Uh, which is what most regulators out there are, the f and that pertains to f the first stage. The second stage is identical to the T3. It just says B2 on it. Uh, all titanium parts. Um, in between the B2 and the T3 is the ST1. If you can guess what that stands for, that is stainless steel. So in that case, the first stage, as opposed to like the T3, which is all titanium, the ST1 is all stainless steel. Um, so those are the three sort of big lines. Um, the T3, all titanium first stage, uh, all titanium metal parts in the second stage. The B2, um, uh, the chrome plated brass, but again second stage designed exactly the same, all titanium parts. And the ST1, the all stainless steel first stage with the second stage that is all titanium. Uh, several years ago, they did um, put out a fourth regulator, uh, which is called the Z3. Uh, it's completely different from the rest of them. Uh, still is a, an amazing breathing regulator. Uh, the same design as the second stage with that auto flow control. Um, however, what they did was uh, they went back to um, uh, non-titanium uh, parts just to drop the cost down. Uh, so it's called the Z because it is actually a brass inlet tube, uh, with, which is then chrome-plated, but then they plated it in zirconium, which made it even more corrosion resistant. Uh, not as corrosion resistant as, as uh, its titanium big brothers and sisters, but um, still a really good regulator. Uh, it's just sort of designed to uh, for 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 people who are uh, are looking for a slightly less expensive one that still functions the same, um, breathes the same. But remember how I showed you the first stage here has the rotating swivel, um, the the swivel turret. You don't get that on the Z3. It has a fixed port, so it's just like every other regulator out there on the market. Um, chrome plated brass with fixed ports, so you kind of don't get a choice of where the hoses go. Um, it's a great first, you know, entry level one, especially if you're sort of tight on money. Um, the Z3, the inter that is. Um, otherwise, the next one up would be the B2, which gives you all those features. The next one up from that, the ST, and then the creme de la creme, the all titanium T3. Um, do we have, Holly, do we have any, any questions that have come up before I talk about their other regulator? Sure. Um, what are the advantages, disadvantages of steel versus titanium versus what was the other one? Oh, yes. Excellent question. So um, your typical regulator is basically chrome plated brass. Um, Brass is easy to mill, uh, it stands up to pressure, uh, and then it's chrome plated just for appearance and also to prevent that, 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 uh, that tarnishing of brass. Um, that's your typical first stage regulator across the market. Um, if you all of a sudden create a regulator that is made out of solid titanium or solid stainless steel, 
you don't have to plate it, which means no chipping, you can dent them, you can drop them, you can basically, they will stand up to abuse, uh, it will never chip, uh, because essentially once we see any chrome plating chipping off of a first stage regulator when we're servicing, servicing them, uh, that regulator is near the, nearing the end of its life. Uh, so, you know, one of the claims made is that especially with the, uh, the T3 being all titanium, this is the last regulator you'll ever buy in your life. Um, any other questions about that? Hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, I'm trying not to, as a uh, regulator repair technician, I'm, I'm trying not to get too much into the, into the weeds of the details, but I can tell you as a regulator repair technician, um, the engineering on these things is incredible. Uh, there's a lot of little details that I'm not going to belabor you guys with because I don't know what the audience is like right now. But basically for us as scuba divers, the important thing is those incredible features the automatic flow control making it just natural breathing regardless of your depth you never have to make any adjustment on the regulator um, uh, the comfort swivel the uh, the nice chompy soft mouthpieces uh, with the dual durometer silicone um, and then the swivel turret that you get on the B ST and T series but not on the Z um, one last thing because I don't want to go too long here and we got a little bit of a late start because of technical difficulties is I do want to talk about their, um, they do make a standard Octo. So if you're looking to get kitted up, uh, you can get a second stage uh, that is um, uh, just colored yellow. You have a choice of either the all titanium parts or uh, a, a, a Z Octo, uh, which is simply those, uh, the, the more traditional materials. Uh, costs a little bit less, uh, but still a great option. Um, you could also go with what several manufacturers have been doing for years, which is something like this. This is a combination uh, power inflator for your BCD and a regulator. Um, it attaches to your BCD and what Atomic did, which is uh, unique to them and uh, uh, another great little brilliant engineering idea on their part is that they have designed this to be, they have several attachments which will fit virtually every single BCD out there. So you don't have to have an atomic BCD. You could have an Aqualung, an Oceanic, uh, whichever one. They have a series that comes with three of these diff different adapters. They will fit virtually every BCD out there. And then it simply screws on, uh, as opposed to others that are permanently zip tied on. The nice thing about that is that means when you're traveling, you take this thing off of your BCD, pack your BCD in your gear bag, put it in the check bag, but this, along with your regulator, the rest of your regulator, goes in your carry-on bag, and that way you know it's nice and safe. Um, this, these come in uh, all sorts of different fun colors. Um, they do actually also make, most of these are all going, are, are all going to be stainless steel uh, internal parts. The lever in there is, uh, is titanium, um, but everything else is stainless steel. However, if, you're, if you really want to go, go crazy with it, they do make a all titanium version of the SS1. Uh, stands for safe second. Uh, this is the first iteration. They haven't found a reason to change it yet. Um, breathes better than any typical Octo. Um, and yes, if you're not familiar with these, uh, just really quickly, um, in the event that your buddy is not paying attention, all of a sudden gives you that out of air scenario, uh, out of air signal, you would take your primary out of your mouth, give it to them, and this goes into your mouth, you breathe off of this, this is the deflate button that you would then use as you safely ascend to the surface and end the dive. Um, so that's the SS1, which is a great option if you're looking to go ahead and streamline your kit, uh, you know, eliminates one more hose, uh, you don't have that octo dangling around anymore. Um, this is my personal favorite for travel, um, along with my titanium uh, first and second stage. Um, I think that's all I can think of. Uh, any other questions come up? What makes Atomic Aquatics a regulator better than other brands? Uh, the engineering that has gone into them. They, like I said, they are engineering geeks. Um, 
Uh, the materials that they use um, are, are basically above and beyond what the traditional ones are. Um, the design, the patented design of the automatic flow control, um, the, the longevity, the fact that you can wait longer with these things to bring them in and have them serviced as to uh, uh, more traditional regulators out there. Um, I mean, there's some great ones. Um, I, I, you know, I've got a bunch of other regulators, but the Atomic is my preferred favorite uh, for that ease of breathing. Um, and then also when it comes time for me to service my own regulators because uh, these things are uh, just so well designed uh, that they're actually a joy to work on, in my opinion. Yeah, any, any other questions? You want to throw them there into the chat? All right, well, if there aren't any more questions, uh, that's great. Sorry this went on a little bit longer than uh, we expected. Uh, and uh, if I have a special glow to me here, it's because <laughs> the AC is not working right now, and we're in Washington, D.C., and it's 90-some degrees outside. So uh, I will wrap up my end here. Uh, have Holly sign off, uh, but thank you guys for joining us and have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks so much, Jonas. That was awesome. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. I just wanted to let you know um, for another, thank you for joining us for another gear deep dive. I wanted to let you know that there is um, a really cool special right now that Patty um, is running. So if you have purchased any Patty e-learning between um, April the 1st of this year and then through July 31st, so there's still time for this, um, you're eligible for 15% off one of these atomic regulators. So we'll post the details in the comments. Um, there's a post about uh, that special and a couple of other specials um, on our website, blueplanetdc.com. Um, there's no code for it, so you don't have to like order it specifically through our website. So we'll go ahead, like I said, and post the comments, um, post the details in the comments, and then you just reach out to us if you wanna redeem that offer. So um, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. These are always really fun. We'll work on the technical stuff for next week. Um, normally, we like to also broadcast these on Instagram. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that this week. Um, but next week at noon, hopefully we'll have this resolved, Friday, our Friday deep um, gear dive <laughs> is going to be on Henderson Green Preen wetsuits. So I think uh, there's this was like some secret um, piece of technology that Henderson was developing for about five years and then they released it um, at DEMA last year. Uh, and I know a couple of you are, um, or a bunch of you have been interested in neoprene free green, um, green preen suits. So uh, we've got some uh, feedback on these that we want to share with you. So be sure to tune in next week to the Friday Gear Deep Dive here live on Blue Planet DC's Facebook and hopefully Instagram next week. All right, thanks so much, everyone. See you then. Bye.